The deaths of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Missouri, Eric Gardner in New York, and 12-year-old Tamir Rice in Cleveland, all at the hands of police, have not only sparked protests but dialogue. People in cities and towns across the United States and here in Oklahoma are discussing race relations between police and minority communities. Hold your hands up. Hold your hands up. Hold your hands up. A protest on the grounds of Oklahoma State Capitol in August was a peaceful one. The sentiment expressed is still being felt today. As we look at the events there, it goes way beyond police misconduct. We cannot any longer go on blithely pretending that racism is not tearing our city, our state, and our nation into shreds. After grand juries in Missouri and New York cleared police officers of any misconduct for the deaths of Michael Brown in Ferguson and Eric Gardner in Staten Island, massive protests erupted across the nation. You must disperse immediately. Is the outrage and being upset warranted? I believe so. Yes, absolutely. Drew Diamond served as the Tulsa chief of police for four years after resigning in 1991. A few years later, he helped author this book about police profiling of minorities while working for a police research organization under the auspices of the United States Justice Department. He also produced this video about police and minority interactions. You were going through that parking lot pretty fast, and I didn't know if you had stolen the car or not. Well, it looked a bit suspicious was his response. He didn't give me a ticket. He never explained to me what I did. Even though it was produced more than 10 years ago, many African-American Oklahomans say nothing much has changed. Demario Solomon Simmons is a prominent Tulsa attorney. In June, he says a Missouri Highway Patrol trooper pulled him over with no justification while en route back to Tulsa. The officer asked for not only his license, but for his wife's. Forces me, requires me to come back into his car, and he asked me, first thing, you have any drugs? You have any guns? You have large sums of cash? What are you doing in Missouri? Why are you here? And just berates me, interrogates me for 20 minutes. So Even though he believed his civil rights were being violated, he was compliant and did not report the incident. He says being guilty of black while driving is not a new experience for him. I'm 38 years old and I can tell you I've experienced on several occasions uh, unfair treatment, discriminatory treatment, uh, very aggressive, unnecessarily. This is wall. Dr. Ray Owens is the pastor of Tulsa's Metropolitan Baptist Church. He says previous encounters make many minorities apprehensive of police. It is almost always perceived as a threatening encounter, even for African-American uh, males who have no criminal history, who are not participating in a crime, who uh, are good citizens, uh, they fear an encounter with a police officer because, one, many of them and many of us <laughs> have had uh, encounters with police officers uh, that we would describe as harassment. Owens moved to Tulsa nine years ago. He grew up in Texas. Owens taught school in South Central Los Angeles, worked for Teach of America in New York City, and pastored at a church in Trenton, New Jersey. I really believe Tulsa is one of the most racially divided cities I've ever encountered. He says in Tulsa there is not much mingling between people of different races and ethnicities. Even in a place like Texas where, where I grew up, uh, you know, there's a lot more fluidity. I mean, people interact and touch one another and encounter one another across racial ethnic lines. And although there is not a lot of diversity in neighborhoods, Owen says... One advantage we have in Tulsa is that we do have uh, a better uh, racial ethnic diversity among our police force. We're at 10 percent of, of our officers are African American. Uh, our city population is between 15 and 17 percent. Uh, we're actually better than the national average. We're better than the federal law enforcement side. Tulsa Police Chief Chuck Jordan says the actions of the officers in New York as they arrested Eric Garner on suspicion of illegally selling individual cigarettes is worthy of scrutiny. I think that every police officer that has ever watched that video says we would have done that differently. Do I think the intent was there to kill the man? No, I absolutely do not. 
Um, <clears throat> but I think there would have been other ways to handle uh, his arrest. Anytime someone says, I can't breathe, that's a red flag. We don't know if it's possible excited delirium. We don't know if it's, if it's some kind of a, of a medical issue. We don't know if it's something we're doing. Uh, that, you know, we, we've, we learned that a long time ago, back in the old days when, when officers hogtied people, and they learned that that restricts breathing. You should not die because you're, you're, you're arguing with a police officer about, about whether or not you should be selling a cigarette. It, you know, it's not much more complicated th than that in terms of police practices. Diamond is an advocate for what is called community policing. It's something he adopted while Tulsa's chief but then was abandoned when he left. Chief Jordan says the department is committed to knowing the communities they serve. Going back to the beat system was a huge part of it, and I encourage my officers to make neighborhood meetings. I encourage my officers to get out and talk to business owners, to talk to community groups. Uh, when we have a, you know, someone just has a little neighborhood party, uh, you know, we want police officers there. We want our beat officers there. Pastor Owens and others interviewed for this report believe many police departments across Oklahoma and the nation need to work harder at keeping the peace. But I think you have to understand the culture of the people. You have to have a heart for the people. You have to build relationships with the people and ask police officers to really embed themselves in the community.